welcome out to another episode of It's All Been Trek Before, this time coming of age. Coming of age, something we've probably talked about many times. I, 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 you pretty much went through my coming of age when we went through the original series. Uh, now we get to do it with the next generation, uh, but it won't be my coming of age. It'll be, well, you saw the episode. It's their coming of age. Speaking of coming of age, It's All Been Done presents iabdpresents.com. Check out the rest of the network, everything going on there. Become a Patreon supporter, support us. And perhaps you will be coming of age on It's All Been Trek Before. Welcome out to another episode of It's All Been Trek Before. We're here. This is Steven. And Keith. Jimmy Jerome. So we're here to talk about the episode, uh, is it Coming of Age? Coming of Age. Coming of Age, which is uh, Stephen Wesley's favorite episode of The Next Generation. <laughs> Dare I say, all of Star Trek. Not my favorite, that's for <laughs> sure. I didn't hate it by any means, but it was not my favorite. I guess that's my first impression. That's a good first yeah. impression. Yeah. I would second that yeah. assertion. <laughs> Keith? It's somewhere it, it, in the middle. It was my absolute favorite. <laughs> a liar. No, I, I enjoyed it. I mean, yeah. it's, I, it kept me making me, th- or, uh, it made me think about wondering, uh, when did they start finding these things so funny? <laughs> I'm not sure what, what, I mean, I'm sure when it, when it aired, it wouldn't have made me laugh as much as it did That's, I wanted the same Very thing, because there are some parts that were laugh out loud unintentionally, I think unintentionally. Well, yeah, I mean, they're just little things. I mean, Very cheesy. Very uh, 1980s. Yes, yes, yes. We open with a scene yes. between Wesley and Jake Curland, played by Stephen Gregory. He looks to be a couple years older than Wesley. We've never seen him before, but he's on the yeah. ship. Apparently, they're big buddies. Yeah. Um, Jake Curland's best known for this and playing a recurring character on Law & Order SVU. Huh. He did 18 episodes uh, over, like, seven years. So he... Uh, apparently didn't even qualify to take the Starfleet Academy entrance exam, <laughs> Jake. And so Wes is like, oh, sorry, pal. Uh, I'm going to go take it anyway. See you later. Yeah, it sounded like only one person from each di- a certain district. I don't, I don't understand how the Starfleet Academy test yeah. is applied. They, 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 they named a place at the end or some sort of designation. It was hard to tell where ge- geographically. That's like an Earth term. Right. But, yeah. In, in the whole of space or space what planet or whatever they were referring to uh, a collection of ships maybe one person per ship per district I, I don't know yeah it's like the Hunger Games they draw your name yeah, yeah. And you have to, no it's so the, he went to take it at what was it Revela 7 or mm-hmm. Revela like 7 that, yeah. something like that was where the test was and they said oh yeah only one person that's here gets to take the test yeah and Apparently, Jake didn't qualify from the Enterprise to even take the test. His scores weren't good enough. So Wesley went, but that makes no sense to me. Because you've got 16 planets. I know it's way more than that. you got 16 planets, and there's four people taking the test on each. On one planet, three people score higher than everybody else. You don't just take one. You take those three. So it made absolutely no sense. I can't believe we could even consider it canon. I feel like it was. It has to be contradictory right, in some way yeah. in the future. Yeah, it, it's. I mean, that, that that's not the way SAT scores are applied, right? <laughs> Probably not. No, I mean, no. I mean there's a lot more that goes <laughs> at every the college exam, at every so. uh, SAT test site. Only one person can get a perfect <laughs> score. Everybody else has to get a lesser score. And then the fact that it all came down to affirmative action. Because mm. when he said the Benzite scores were slightly higher, oh, right. but I don't believe him. <laughs> I don't, because Wesley, I mean, look at how Wesley passed the hallway test. Look at how Wesley came out of the psych yeah. test, like, confident. Right. The Benzite barely beat him on the other test because Wesley helped him. Right. By, like, seconds. So I, I don't believe him. I feel like it was well, affirmative maybe, action. Well, maybe we're on to something. Diversity. Right. Yeah. yeah, it was... Mm. Huh. I mean, it's cool that the, he's the first Benzite. I, I want to see more say, Benzite. Uh, yeah. Although, strangely enough, when the first series of Playmates action figures came out for um, the next generation, there is an unnamed Benzite, just a generic Benzite, oh, really? instead of Murdoch. I don't know why they didn't just make it Murdoch. Do we see more of them? Murdoch. I don't think so. <laughs> At least not in season I one. I kind of liked him. I like, yeah. I... At first, I was like, oh, it's too humanoid. But then as the episode went on, I thought, I like the little... Thing that he was breathing out of mm-hmm. or into, and then it was never explained, really, right? Yeah, I mean, no, they, yeah. they, uh, their atmosphere is not as oxygen rich as ours. That's they okay. need to help breathe. Yeah, we. So the John Putch who played Murdoch is best known as a director. Okay. He, uh, currently, was has been directing episodes of American Housewife. 
He's directed a bunch of episodes of Cougar Town. He's got a bunch of episodes of Scrubs. So he's primarily a sitcom director. Okay. But he does have 67 acting credits. Just uh, last one was in 2001. And I don't see anything like too big. Now, am I wrong? Is he like a 30-year-old guy at this point? He was born in 1961. So like Uh, almost 40. Yeah, 27? No, older than that. No, No, you're right. You're almost 30, not, not 40. Yeah. I get my ears mixed. That's <laughs> he does have a cameo in Star Trek Generations as a journalist, huh. so he will be back in right. Star Trek. I, en- I enjoyed him. I enjoyed the character. I think it was okay. Yeah. I thought he was slightly better than the other two. Well, how do you have a Vulcan on a Vulcan female and completely wasted? I mean, the, this is how that <laughs> Sandy Freeze, who wrote this episode, showed you or Fry, <laughs> Sandy Fries, yeah, um, showed you how to do that. The, the Vulcan to to Shannik, played by. Taja Valenza. Hmm. Never uh, heard of this person. She's best known for voicing video games. Looks like Metal Gear oh. mm. and Batman Arkham Asylum. She was Poison Ivy and Arkham oh, Asylum and nice. Arkham Knight. She's a little like my ex-wife. She's also the Shenzhou's computer voice in Star Trek Discovery. Huh. So she's returned to the Star Trek fold recently. Interesting. Yeah, I wanted to get more out of her, and instead we had, and we'll get to the other story. She was in Clone Wars. Oh. you Star Wars fans. Oh, all right. Yeah. And uh, her character in Clone Wars has appeared in, like, Star Wars Old Republic and some other Star Wars properties. She mm-hmm. plays Shock T? Or Shock oh, T? Yeah, one of, the, one of the Jedi. And she's probably an Easter egg in The Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> she's probably in the background somewhere. Probably. I, th- I, think, she's, I think she's the Twi'lek uh, Jedi. Oh, okay. Unless I'm getting mixed oh, up. Oh, you might be right. Yeah, I think you're right. And then we had SD, SD? SD? SD Chandler played uh, the other girl who was... She only has 11 credits. This was her next to last credit. Uh, a lot of her stuff's for visual effects? Yeah, she did visual effects for Team America World Yeah. Plus. Oh, I thought you were... <laughs> <And Pleasant No. World. laughs> No, <laughs> Actually, she only has three visual effects credits. Right, but it's that and it's... The other two are... Uh, what was the one? Um... I thought one was a space movie, maybe not. Oh, uh, Long Kiss Goodnight, which yes. hmm. a good action movie. But I'll throw yeah. that out there. Okay. I like uh, that one. But yeah, I, I mean, if you saw her acting in this episode, as you did, you can <laughs> see why she went to visual effects. And you uh, use acting loosely. I do. I it, do. It was... Uh, it's really disappointing. It was strange. When she walked in, I don't know if it was, I mean, I think part of it was the, the writing of that line. Yeah. What is it? <laughs> Like, but she said it as though she'd been summoned there to him. Like, like, what did you want? Like, what is it? I felt like <laughs> the whole show began with everyone's first line was like, "Say it as stiffly as you can." <laughs> like uh, Wesley's first line in that in at the very top of the show. Although I did like that opening scene. His <laughs> first line just seemed really stiff. Like, I have a line to say. I'm saying it to you. <laughs> just like, what? What? No, this is supposed to. Be... And then again, I. I thought it improved from there, but yeah, it was just like I feel like I st- they had to sell for S.D. Chandler because Carrie Russell wasn't old enough yet, <laughs> <laughs> and she would have been much better. Yeah, because she was so a few years away from yeah uh, Felicity. Oh yeah, like and a decade away. Star Wars: Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> well, a lot of decades away <laughs> yeah. from that. We all were, but she was good in that. She's good in everything. She is. I love the Americans. So, honestly, that was my alternate episode, is we'd get a spinoff of the Starfleet Academy with Picard in charge as the principal, <laughs> and Wesley as a student, and these would be his classmates. But given the cheesy level of acting of his classmates, you know it's a cheesy show. Well, yeah, my thought was, it, and my alternate episode was, it's, it's a teen rom-com. Either it's an 80s rom-com... <coughs> And the guys... A 2480s rom-com? The guys are separated from the girls, and so, you know, at some point there's a panty raid. That means the say Chandler would... There'd be, have to be some partial nudity, because it's an 80s rom-com, and there'd be a lot of things that are problematic now. Uh, hmm. Or, preferably... Or, maybe not preferably. Eh, I'm not sure where I learned that. That's a different, that's a different podcast. Huh. But, uh, or alternatively, in a 90s uh, rom-com where... He's in uh, Wesley falls hard for Oriana, but it takes him a long time to win her over. Or actually, maybe he falls for the Vulcan, and then he she's his best friend. Yeah, or or oh. somebody or somebody's trying to yeah that yeah that's <laughs> it ends up oh she was there all along and then she puts her hair down and takes off her glasses. That's that's where I, that was my third option. That's where I was trying to get to. Yep. Oh, you're beautiful. 
And I never noticed. And she covers up her ears. Oh, of course. Yeah. Because <laughs> they look like they went to her. I mean, it's, <laughs> they kind of went there when Wesley was like, or when she says to Wesley, it's a good thing you're cute or you'd be really obnoxious. And he has the total Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. I'm cute. I'm yeah. cute. And then we never go anywhere with it. No. Yeah, it was. I, yeah. I mean, they totally hooked up in a deleted scene, I'm sure. <laughs> that was his first. He should have come back and like, I didn't get into the Academy, but man, <laughs> I, I learned something this weekend. It's him walking across the shuttle bay and puts his fist up like yes. uh, Judd Nelson at the end of the Breakfast Club. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the, the four of them and the, the random, the, uh, well, the other guy, the Zaldin. They're all stuck in detention. And then, uh, yeah, Wesley has to write the note for them to, <laughs> at the end of the day. <laughs> So we have an issue with the characters. We have an issue with the guidelines of who gets accepted. <laughs> we did. The tests themselves. First of all, like, the first test we see is speaking out loud to them, which I know we've seen on Vulcan in other iterations. Yeah. Not yet, but we will. Right. But it's just like, that seems to be the most inefficient way to test take, because we're going to distract everybody else around yeah. you. Yeah. 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 The computer. And I can read faster than you can speak to me. Right. And, you know, why wouldn't they have headphones on or something? Something. I mean, hmm. yeah. Or, yeah. <laughs> Just, I don't, I don't know. I feel like that's a, something they'll have in the 24th century. I mean, the only thing that really stuck with me about the tests, and this is my favorite scene of the episode, was when was Wes's psych test, test, where he had to go in and save the guy. And to me, I love it because it's, we know why, how his father died. We've, it's right. been mentioned. And here we get to see it played out with him in it. And I know it doesn't go too deep, but in my head it becomes deeper than what's on screen. Because of the parallels. Yeah, and I thought the whole time was going to be a holodeck thing. No. Nah. Yeah. Um, and I love that actors are getting still getting plenty of good work in the 24th century. The guy who <laughs> didn't move, when he comes out, the look he gives Wesley is fantastic. He was just a local improver. <laughs> yeah. Go, yeah. Go pace like, of the day. All right, here's your scene. Go. Yeah, <laughs> it was great. Uh, Although yeah. I will say, if Wesley, Wesley had like... 80 seconds to get in that room and save people and it took him 30 seconds to drag out the first guy so if he spent a little more time like, getting in there and rescuing him he could have saved them both well there's definitely a little Raiders of the Lost Ark thing because it looked like Wesley almost had him out the door and then the next shot from the side he he somehow regressed 10 or 20 feet uh-huh. to get that guy out <laughs> and then so, he reached back through and grabbed his boot at the last second and the real message is, yeah the real message is he needs to work on his upper body strength well no I guess his lower body lift with the legs pull mm. that guy out mm. Or maybe get the guy almost out the door, get his head out the door, and then go back and get. I, there's a better way to handle it. But oh, absolutely! I think he. We, so I guess we think he failed. I mean, not <laughs> fail. He didn't fail. But the, eh, there's better ways to do it. And I don't like to call it the psych test. Spe- well, speaking of, well, <laughs> and, and while you're talking about, while you're talking about cops, real quick, <laughs> the guy who was hiding behind the pipe, uh-huh. scared. Wyatt Knight is best known for Porky's and Porky's Two. Oh, that's hilarious! And Porky's Revenge. Play oh Tommy my Turner. god. Huh. That is hilarious. Go ahead, Keith. Sorry. What was he going to say? Um, what did you just say about the psych test before that? Oh, I don't... Oh. He went oh, no, no, no. Both. Right, both. Right. So, first of all, failure. Yeah. That, that jumping way to the end, that that was... I, I didn't write this one down, but that bothered me. Picard, that, the only person you're truly competing against is... Well, no, no, no. I mean, no. The, the, <laughs> the word failure in this, in this ah. case, because it, it just means that... One person happened to score the highest out of everybody in this station, so yeah, it doesn't like it's not like you failed the test; you just didn't. When Chang, uh, the guy who was yeah, Lieutenant Chang, Robert Ditto, I know whatever, um, he said, you know, like it would be a loss for Starfleet if you guys don't come back and try again. Right. So like they didn't score bad; I mean, they obviously scored higher than a lot of people to even get there. Right. Yeah. So. It, it, they can't. They can't possibly only take one person per year per. No, it was like, dumb. That that yeah. part of it was dumb. I'm trying to think of like what, how small the academy would be. I mean, they really get. I out. mean, it's not a huge, huge academy, but they've got to staff all the starships. Hmm. I mean, it's in San Francisco. You know that city doesn't have much room to build new product, new uh, buildings. So hmm. can't be that big. But yeah, I don't the, know. The other thing that the, the whole the psych test thing, or, or rather the. the 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 actual name of what they were doing and and uh, God, I can only remember the name name of the like the actor now Ito um, Robert Ito yes yeah just yeah the the, the condescension when when 
Wesley asked him about the psych test, and it was just like, oh, it's not a psych test. It's, it's a, a psych long test. synonym of no. a psych test. It's a psychological evaluation in which we do these things, <laughs> in which you know, it, and some of the situations vary. Uh, <laughs> speaking of, dude, just uh, sadly to come back to White Knight, I remember from the movies actually. He was one of the main dudes, I guess. Whatever, however, main the dude died of suicide in 2011. Oh, he is nothing. Sad. Yeah, he went through some cancer treatments. Didn't go. Bring us well. down. Yep. Robert Edo? No, Robert Edo did not. No, oh. uh, the Wyatt. The guy that hid yeah, behind the pipe. Yeah. My uh, my first note would have probably transitioned into fashion. Actually, I just noted that the Jake seemed like he had like a four o'clock shadow. <laughs> I guess this probably because of the remastered. Uh, video, we can see see that little that, that little. Just yeah, buzzer. I I was he in like a bathrobe over I, some pajamas. I put it looked like he was wearing, <laughs> like he was wearing a smoking jacket, <laughs> yes. or like an or like an, yeah. like an ass cup. That's the real reason the color. we didn't qualify for the test. <laughs> his his, uh, his uh, extracurricular activities. <laughs> yeah, speaking of fashion, I noticed uh, Worf's makeup tonight more than usual. Yep. Mm, like the, the line dude. at the neck. Yeah, and yeah. I was I had the same feeling like oh it's two thousand. 20 now mm -hmm. and it's high def so yeah mm -hmm. uh, the other thing was yeah when Picard's in the dress uniform at first I'm like why is he the only one in the dress uniform then explain it but then they got around it by not showing the dinner so sure. nobody else had to be in one But he didn't have any rank insignia on his dress no. uniform which is unusual yeah. normally it's visible hmm speaking of Worf I, I noted that they've. It feels like this is the first time they really gave him something interesting to say, yeah, or something something I useful. Completely agree. And it's like they started giving him characterization. I, I noted this just in time for the next episode because I happened to when I was because it's a big warp episode. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's like it would have been out of nowhere if they had tried to suddenly do something. But even now, it's still like a little, maybe a little too late. I mean that that scene with. Uh, Wesley's saying, oh, I don't want to be alone, and Worf stays. It's yeah. weird. Yes. Yeah. But, but to have him explain his deepest fear, and the only fools have no fear, which gives us insight into him as a Klingon mm -hmm. and all of that. Yeah. I don't know. I thought that was a really nice character moment between the two of them. Yes, definitely. And I definitely would never have pegged Worf as one of Wesley's friends. Mm -hmm. Like, Data I get, mm -hmm. Riker I get a little bit, but Worf? So that's kind of cool. And his it's... explanation of his fear was kind of like, you know, oh, I'm... I'm not an alcoholic anymore. It's like, no, you're always an alcoholic. Every day you're confronting it. Yeah. I mean, I, I know it's it's hard to reconcile because uh, we're still. It feels like we're still just stuck in that first season. Uh, um, I mean, I, I know I feel like Worf became one of my favorite characters in a way. I mean, it's just it's this so drastically different what he's like right now in this series and what he's going to be become. Well, he and Jordy didn't get much in season one because they yeah. weren't department heads yet. Mm. But, spoiler, we're going to lose Tasha Yar here soon, and then Worf will get us. God, I forgot about that. She's still I here. I keep thinking every week this is the episode. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think we're I knew right away so. tonight. No, it's actually, I think we're like four weeks away. Okay. Hmm. The writer, Sandy Freeze, never wrote another episode of Star Trek. This was her one and only. Hmm. Or his one and only Sandy. I guess it could be either one. Yeah. Oh, it's a his. It's a okay. him. This is what he's best known for, though. Hmm. Oh, wow. Although he did write some Thundercats in the 80s. Yeah. And Jeb. Oh, I also noted that Worf said that fear is the mind killer, essentially. Huh. Well, he didn't actually say that. I'm just saying. Yes. <laughs> so what he was saying to Wesley, it's like, don't waste your time yeah. you know, eating the thing. Yeah. I thought it was funny. My head at the, probably, yeah, it's not really as, nearly as funny now as it was in my head at the time. Uh, just to circle back, we talked about this off mic, but everything is a test on Star Trek. Why, <laughs> why is everything a test? At least it wasn't a godlike being this time. But. Yes, uh, points well, for that. If you want to call it a test, it's really more of an evaluation. Yeah. In which you know, certain <laughs> situations arise, but they vary. <laughs> <laughs> I like to call that a test, but right, sure. Well. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> uh, <laughs> speaking of which, the Zoldan test, I noted that was the only thing yeah. I remembered from this episode. Oh, yeah. really? Like, when I think about when, when that comes up of the idea of Wesley first encountering, like, Academy mm -hmm. conditions... I always remember that encounter and the idea that he figured out, wait a minute, I have to be rude to this person. In an already 80s yeah. rom-com, he's the big bully that, that <laughs> Wesley has to overcome. Mm. <laughs> I guess in the 90s one, too. But mm. instead of his bully, he's his rival. And then in the, the, uh, the teens, the 2000 teens, the bully becomes his best friend by the end. That's right. Mm. Yeah. That's exactly, exactly. Or they begin dating. Uh, and they realize they're not even into the girl. Or mm -hmm. vice versa. I, I like the Zaldons. I wanted to see more of that guy, too. Yeah. Sadly, he's only in another 43 more episodes. Oh, really? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was his one. I'm guessing you're right. 
So the rest of my things are about the entire other storyline we've been involved in. Most of mine are too, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. So there's actually three storylines, in my opinion. I mean, there's the Academy one, right? Mm, sure. Mm. And of course, there's the Bacard evaluation. But I kind of feel like Jake's storyline is that whole third oh, separate yeah, you're plot. Right. Maybe, yeah. And my least favorite of the three. Well, yeah. I didn't really care for Jake's plot. I mean, so the, the things, notes I have about Jake's plot are mainly you couldn't use the tractor beam as he was first escaping. <laughs> He mm-hmm. was too far to transport him right. between them and the planet right. and they could be from the planet. Right. So that makes no sense. No one else knows how to bounce a shuttle craft out in the atmosphere. Picard is the only one that could do it. Right. It really felt like to me, and I'm I'm sure this isn't the case because canon, but if this was the Orville and this was Captain Mercer mm-hmm. instead of Picard, I feel like Picard was feeling the heat that he was being investigated, so he set the whole thing up. Yeah. And that uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Stand by yeah. and make him look good. Well, that leads to one of the And then Picard slips him $10 when he gets back on the ship. It reminded me of... They could have made... If they didn't do all the Wesley stuff, it was just that they're getting investigated. Mm -hmm. Either Eclipse episode where they're like, what happened there? Well, the way I remember it... Yeah. Yeah. Episode in a bottle. (laughs) They (laughs) sure... And then they they flash back to an episode we've already seen thing. I mean, this is pretty early in the season of the series for flashback. right. But I was amazed because the original Star Trek, they never referenced old episodes. Yes. Like, how many events got referenced? Yeah, and I'd rather, I loved it. I'd rather had, whether it was a clip show or a cut to, that might have been more interesting than, telling and sh- than sh- showing than telling. The other thing it reminded me of, which goes into your thing of the possible, oh, we all set this up. To, hmm. it, was a, it reminded me of the first three, and I guess the later seasons of MASH too, but where some tough colonel would come or general would come in. Mm-hmm. And he'd be like, oh, we got to get these guys in line. And then by the end, he'd realize, even though these oddballs had their own ways, when it came, the chips were down and they really had to get to work. They were excellent surgeons and it was a tip-top outfit. And so when Remick's like, I would love to serve with you. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, you won him over. He was here to knuckle you down, but even with your unorthodox ways, you won him over. So, so it would have been a great clips or mash episode. This afternoon, right before you got here, I just watched the next to last episode of Grey's Anatomy that aired, yeah. where Meredith Grey, the title character... That's Ellen Pompeo. Right? Yes. Okay. She was on trial um, for whether she got to keep her medical license, <laughs> because she, last year, forged uh, her child's name on another child's medical records, because yeah. they didn't have insurance, blah, blah, blah. She got fired. She's been like doing community service and stuff this season. So, but the point was... They do the trial. They bring back all these bad things she's done over the course of the series, like back to season one and show clips. Wow. And you're oh, like, okay. oh, yeah, I forgot just really how bad a doctor <laughs> she is. Like, yeah, she saves a bunch of lives, but she breaks the rules constantly. And so you feel like there's no way she could possibly keep her license. And then they trotted every patient for 15 seasons right. to be like, she saved my life. You have to instate her. And they instate her. And I'm like, no. No, 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 no. I don't care how good a doctor you are. You lose your license after that list of rule breaking. Mm. Probably the 12 people that she euthanized probably really was a black market. Oh, gosh. <laughs> now we're getting into local issues yes, about Carmel Hospital. Oh. Mm. Uh, Wait, uh, go, going back to the, the thing about the, the way this episode is put together, mm-hmm. uh, I did a visual gag for the audience who couldn't see that. Of course, <laughs> I was just turning turning my iPad over to Steven there to show him that I actually had a note saying that it was turning into a bottle episode mm-hmm. in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, I said it, it makes a lot of sense that there would be an inquiry about, inquiry about these things by now. And it's, it's a, I, I liked that they actually just sort of referred to them in the sense of rewarding people who have been paying attention to the series up to that point. Yeah, that's something to do that. And yeah. uh, just, it's, it's surprising that the, those sorts of things don't happen more often on these, these kinds of shows where it's like somebody doesn't notice, like, you know, this doesn't quite make sense here mm-hmm. in the log. Or can you elaborate on this? Because these yeah. are unusual things that are happening. I mean, in Kirk's time, <laughs> they didn't have so much oversight. Now, in Kirk's time, there's bureaucracy. Yeah, yeah I, I like the setup was just so rough. Like, it, it, it wasn't well wasn't necessarily well executed, but I yeah, like the idea yeah. that it was happening. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, because I just thought it was just like, you know, they come on board and like the. You know, the the stinger before the opening credits is very, like, it was just like, oh, that's, at first, when they first say it, it's like, oh, that's kind of weird. That's a regular. Does that really deserve a dun-dun-dun kind of thing? I don't think so. But, and then, to put on my attorney hat, and I don't know how Jag's, Jag works, even though I've seen some episodes of that show. <laughs> but it feels like you have to have a more specific mandate than... I can ask you whatever I want, and that's what I've been told. So you have to answer me, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, I feel like even in the military you have some... Yeah. You should, you should be, you have some ability to be told... You know, again, I don't know Starfleet 
constitution, or whatever. But mm-hmm. it should be some kind of you have to be at least apprised of what you know you're being asked. And I I would have asked for an attorney to be there if I was everybody testifying um, uh, before I answered one question. I was I was disappointed in myself. Uh, I noted at the beginning that the admiral, along these lines, doesn't even give a category of things that are wrong right. on the ship. Like maybe a right. something mechanical. Is it personnel? And obviously, it's, it's supposed to be something that's going to point to the captain if he wouldn't say anything to him about right. it. I realize that later. It's like, why didn't I think of that? But uh, just even then, there should have to be some, as you're saying, some sort of narrower Right. I know focus. they were trying to build a mystery, but it just led to us being like, oh, is it a surprise party? And <laughs> is he going to get a promotion, which has ended up... Well, yeah, but so there was something they touched on in this episode that they then seemed to dismiss at the end, where, at, where Admiral Quinn, uh, Ward Costello... Uh, who's Picard's old friend, just like the original series, they right. all know each other. <laughs> Every, he, it's a small, small universe. He claims that he sees conspiracies, and it's something right. brought within Starfleet. Yeah. And then at the end, he's like, ah, oh, maybe we're just paranoid and I'm in politics too long. Right. That bothered me, because I'm like, if you're really, like, Picard's friend, and mm-hmm. you're not, like, mentally off the deep end, there's probably something to it. Mm-hmm. And right. I do see, um, it's a little bit of a spoiler here, sorry, Keith, that uh, before the end of the season, might be the season finale, episode 24, Okay. Um, we will see Admiral Quinn and Remnick again. Oh, okay. And they're following up on the conspiracy thing. Well, well that's, that's good then, at least. So I mean... that wasn't just a dropped plot, which in these days, they really didn't uh, do those kind of that things. That was what I thought it was. This is going to be revisited later. I still yes. think it was super clumsily handled here and just yeah, wasn't the, that interesting. The next episode that's part of it is called Conspiracy. Okay. So they are going to bring it up. Um, yeah. I'm glad they're revisiting it, though, because that happens so rarely in, mm-hmm. in this era of television. Uh, I did ask, where is Sam, Samuel T. Cogley when you need him? Yes. Referring <laughs> to court martial. He would have been TR. really, really old. Uh, <laughs> and still have been reading his books, but yeah. Where's the, it, where's the Morse code chair? Yeah. <laughs> Instead, we had Robert Shenkon. Shenken? Is that who played Remnick? Who plays uh, Remnick. Who is mainly a writer these days. He wrote Hacksaw Ridge. Oh, wow. He wrote four episodes of The Pacific, the miniseries. Right. Um, so, yeah, he's not just R- Remnick in two All episodes. Right. I will say, though, when they, he asked at the end, like, I want to serve on this ship. I feel like Picard should have said, uh, don't call us, we'll call you. <laughs> because he went in there and ticked everybody off. They really think, he yeah, really thinks I, he's going to position? I thought that he was... I, I thought didn't he was, mean it. I thought it was intentionally yeah. being great, yeah. grading yeah. to you know as part of his job to try to throw people off balance. I get that, but that's not the way. If you're trying to like job interview for a position on the show, well, yeah, yeah, I guess. I think I think it's Picard who sums it up, or no, Remnick's the one who's like, "Is it? Is it, you don't want to say it because you're guilty?" And I'm like, "Guilty of what? You haven't even said what he's Objection. charged with. <laughs> yeah, you haven't even said what he's charged with. But, yeah, I'm guilty of." Spending too much on this muffler. I mean, what the hell is he guilty of? I mean, they've never even, they haven't even told him what he's guilty of. And that's why I agree with Picard that it's a charade. <laughs> it is a charade, what is going on. I liked Worf's response to Remnick, where he's like, so you're, Worf's like, a mistake was made. So you're saying there's no procedure in place. I was saying a mistake was made. <laughs> like, that's how you're going to handle those people. Yeah, he did, Just, he did a good job. Is uh, it, isn't it Remick? Yeah. Is sure. it Remick? Yeah. Okay. Did I say it wrong? You guys are both saying Remick. Remick, okay. I had <laughs> Remick. Two but... M's. Remick. Oh, okay. Remick. Lieutenant Commander Dexter Remick. Uh, I also wrote down, as far as the Admiral, some friend. Some <laughs> friends always end up sucking. <laughs> yeah, but in this case, he wasn't evil. He was just trying to make sure Picard was on the up and up. Uh, yeah. I, I think I the mistake is that, that, that both he and, and the uh, examiner on, uh, for the Academy are godlike beings. We just didn't <laughs> see it coming. So. Uh, I like the line, Mr. Remick has left the ship. Very into <laughs> Elvis has left the building. Huh. Uh, I also think the best way to handle Remick is to do the Riker thing and do the Michelle Pfeiffer out of. Oh God! What was the name of that movie? Uh, Dangerous Minds. Dangerous Minds. <laughs> he hopped over the chair backwards. <laughs> <laughs> but, Let's get but serious. Riker has a habit of doing that. We'll yeah, see wait. him do it over and over again. But the, but the chair, but the chair wasn't even. Like no. turned around, it was just—it was just—he didn't bother to pull the chair out, so he had to kind of <laughs> straddle over it yeah. to, to sit, and then just kind of lean forward. Like way in Remick's personal space, like <laughs> lean way. In. After four and a half minutes of standing there with his hands on his hips like Superman, just be like, "You can sit down." <laughs> 
Superman. Okay. <laughs> I mean, from the beginning, when they Quinn said, I need to talk to you, Picard, he's like, okay, Riker can come too. No, he can't. Riker's face in that moment. Love it's it. like, oh, no, no, no. You, you can't have beef with number one. All I could hear when Riker sat down was... Men spend most of their lives living in a starship paradise. That's all <laughs> oh I can hear in my brain. <laughs> uh, uh, I liked Picard's scowl when the Admiral first mentions you know, the job at the Academy. His scowl is just like, there is nothing I'd rather do. And then the next two scenes are him being, of course, uh, paternal is not the right word, but very mentorly. Yeah, with, to the kids. With Jake and, and, kids. and, and Wesley. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. I thought it was very interesting they chose to reveal... To Wesley Picard just to reveal him that he had failed the entrance yeah. the first time because so often the like Kirk you never see the flaws in Kirk or if they're flaws they're well, strengths like they're you flaws. said he didn't fail he changed the rules right well that was the that was the, for the got, that was the entrance right. camp. but yeah I mean. Kirk would never fail it's a very different captain yeah and being able to admit failure yeah. is something Kirk never does no. I mean I feel like it takes him till the final movie. Star Trek Six, where he's like, I was wrong about Klingons. To like yeah. ever say he was wrong about yeah. anything in uh, 79 episodes of six films. Yeah, I mean, I think Wrath of Khan, there's a little bit of that, and even on the original series, but I think to your point, it's. He always likes to believe there are options to saying he failed. So. It's a different type of masculinity. It is. Shatner's yeah. doing the old yeah. type, and mm-hmm. Picard's doing the more modern man. Yeah. Actually, ahead of his time, I feel like, for the late yeah. 80s. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I like Picard a lot. I'm sure. super. By the time this airs, Star Trek Picard will have premiered, and I'm super looking forward to yeah. it. Have not seen it yet, but it's going to be awesome. Uh, I thought the shuttle didn't look as great as the effects have been in the no. show. The shuttle was really. And they have a few so different sorry. shuttles on the Enterprise. Yeah, I don't know if you've okay. noticed. They're not all the same like they were on That's the Enterprise. Yeah, okay. okay. And this was one of the smaller ones. This looked like the Galileo. Although, again, okay, so this this kid. Jake. Uh, yeah, I, don't, I know his name. I don't. I choose not to use it because he's not worth <laughs> not naming. But he steals the shuttle, immediately breaks it somehow, even though he's been working on shuttles. <laughs> then Picard bounces him off the atmosphere. And Picard's like, "You good to get home with the car, right?" Yeah. Yeah, sure. I'm fine. I didn't just break it and all right. die. They, yeah, he's he's over he's balanced the dilithium. They made up something that which yeah, shuttle does even sense. need dilithium crystals. Probably no, because they're not going warp they, speed, they right? Or, I guess they can. Yeah, it just was very hokey yeah. from start to finish. Uh, I I don't know if you guys maybe they still have these teams. Maybe they still have the the things where the high school teams face off against each other on knowledge and trivia. Oh, the knowledge bowl or something. Or is that what it is? I can't remember. It's something still like happened. that. Yeah. I can't think what it's called. It we call it a school's match wits. So I okay. just called that part of the episode as starship's match wits. Hmm. Uh, and when the Enterprise lost, because the the Dorkin, the more to more Doc one, the, the Dorkin. Uh, I love seeing Robert Edo, Sam, the infamous Sam from Quincy, mm-hmm. Quincy fame. He's which got I'm tons of credit. Pretty sure that's what he's best known for. But uh, he's the when I hear Edo, I still think of him first, rather than Judge Lance Edo. So as you should. I was a bit huge fan, huge Robert Edo fan. I thought he was good in the episode too. I mean, I think he was the best guest actor in the... Well, I don't know. I liked Remnick. I liked Quinn. I yeah, liked I, thought, I thought they were both good, too. I didn't like the kids. There were a lot of these lines make it even play even more into the 80s rom-com sex comedy we talked mm-hmm. about. Uh, but Oleana's first line, I think, is something about... And then she finishes it with, the unit you just put down. She says to Wesley, it's like, uh, yeah, you have no idea. And exactly. I'll pick your unit right back exactly. up. Exactly. Uh, I just checked um, IMDb real quick, and mm-hmm. Quincy is what he's second best known for. Really? What he's best known for is The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai, the 1984 film. Oh, okay. I could spend like... And then f- X-Files is number four best known for. Oh, I didn't know he did that. I was going to say, I, was, I could spend like five minutes picking apart just that one interaction when she walked into the room. <laughs> Why it didn't make any sense. And just... I, Oleana? I yeah, yeah. 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 Well, uh, the accusatory tone in her uh, voice is if... Uh, the. I don't know. Is she saying, are you stealing it? Are you playing with it? Did you bring that? Um, but what, I mean... I, yeah. And this sort of implied familiarity, too, just out of nowhere, like... It, what is it? As if, he should, as if he should know what she's talking yeah, about. Yeah, it's hard to tell if, like, there was more to that storyline and they had to cut <laughs> it back, or they were just like, that's just all they had, and let's get to the test or whatever. <laughs> you have to ask us, Sandy, see what he says. Give him a call. The writer. Uh, if he's still alive. I'm on our special episode. 
We don't interview people. <laughs> we, so, so, so a lot of the podcasts that do television stuff will reach out to people yeah. involved and get interviews. Yeah. And I'm sure we could interview some people if we wanted to because there's so yeah, many people involved sure. in the show. I just don't feel like that's this podcast. Mm. Well, they'll have to come and watch an episode with us. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't think I'm going to be reached out to anybody. <laughs> I, it's just not, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like everybody's already told their stories. I've read so many of them. I don't need to that's talk fair. to you. It was directed by Michael Vihar. Vihar. The one thing that stood out about the directing to me, and he's still going to direct 11 episodes of Enterprise, 13 episodes of Voyager, 7 episodes of DS9, uh, as well as how many episodes of this show I'm looking. Oh, this is the only episode he directed of this show. What struck me about him is so many reflection shots. People's face reflected yeah. in the computer screens. I yeah, kind of caught the them? wharf one uh, dur- so during, many during the... Interview. And there's or Riker in the ready room with the test. Yeah, the war one was very obvious. There were like four of them, which seemed like a lot. Oh, my last note, and this goes back to the Academy stuff. The um, Murdoch was the second fastest time ever on that puzzle, mm-hmm. and yet within seconds, Wesley and the Vulcan finished right behind him, and then seconds later, the buzzer went off. So, does that mean, like, I don't understand? Are we talking like quantum fractions of a second? Perhaps. And almost everybody finishes it within a couple second time frame? It, they failed, though. It did not make <laughs> sense to me. Anyway, one of many things. That's all my notes. Okay, well, let's move to rankings then. Uh, and let's start with Wesley on a scale of 1 to 10. How annoyed were you with him? This might be my highest second. I'll give him a 4. I didn't hate him. Okay. But he was more annoying than usual for me. Hmm. Yeah. I thought he was one of the least annoying people this episode. <laughs> yeah, I would, I would, I'm going to give him a two. I was down to a two as well. I would say that there were you know, a couple of strange delivery things. It may or may not have been his fault. Uh, but then <laughs> when you compare him against some of the other <coughs> acting that was going on in the, in the Academy, that bumped him up a little bit. And also, I, I like they didn't have him be just the absolute best at mm-hmm. the end somehow. Mm-hmm. Or even that, yeah. even that wasn't enough. Yeah. So that the kind Even of though he's uh, acting in, so he's got the experience, everything, yeah. Balanced out as far as. Uh, well, yeah. his average score is only a two point six, which is not right. not mm-hmm. high at all. Yeah. Um, although we've had several episodes where he's been less. Who yeah. was your annoying person? Was uh, Remick. <laughs> I mean, I know he's supposed to be, but yeah, he was the most annoying. Keith, who was your annoying? I'll have to come back to that. I mean, R- Remick is sort of like the fill-in spot, but I, th- I thought he was kind of funny. Yeah, like he was funny. About that, just to, he didn't annoy me. I, obviously, um, I'm going to go with the kid, Jake. Oh, wow, that's that's a, oh, good, that's a good choice, choice. too. Uh, yeah, I liked him at first, but then when it, well, as soon as he got on that shuttle, he was real. <laughs> Although I will agree with the Admiral and, and Remick, where the hell are the security? There's got to be a little more security than that. I mean, he had authorization. He had access to the shuttle bed. Although, to go back to... Metal lock doors. A classic shuttle incident. Decker, when he takes it in the Doomsday Machine... They weren't able to stop him either. Uh, I'll go with Jake at the moment. I just yeah, I can't think of anything else. Jake I mean, from if, State Farm. If people are named Jake, they're just annoying. That's <laughs> Unless you're Jake Cotton. He's Perhaps. not annoying. <laughs> Men, women of Star Trek. It's a gray area. Am I allowed to pick... <laughs> you're allowed to pick her. I'm gonna, am pick. I allowed to pick Oleana? Cause mm. You're allowed to pick her. Well, yeah, I'm going to pick her. Because only because she was 24 or whatever. Otherwise... And I'm she's older than you, so... That's true. That's yeah. true. She is older than me. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to pick her, too. Uh, she's... I mean, I was fine when this episode aired. Yeah. I, so it's hard now to go back and be like, oh, she was attractive. But I know when I first saw it, I'm like, oh, I like her. She's attractive. If I was more true to my principles, I would have gone with a Vulcan. Uh-huh. And again, she did kind of look like Mac's wife. But I don't have a good reason other than Oleana was, she's beautiful. So. I agree. And I'm a yeah. Carrie Russell fan. Yeah. So her take, hair was great, too. I'll take the look alike. Yeah. Keith? Well, the Vulcan, specifically because she looks like his ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, quite a, I don't even know if I've ever even met her. <laughs> to honestly, but, Yeah, Vulcan, no, definitely. Sorry, I'm sticking with Bre- Brenda Strong. It's my current one, right? Yes, sorry, I'm sticking with Brenda Strong. Okay. I'm violating my own rules of conduct. <laughs> That's fine. I'm sticking I hope Ramek doesn't show up here to investigate. <laughs> he probably will. He probably will. Uh, we're going to rank this episode. Hmm... Let's go with the last Wesley episode, Justice. Right? Wasn't that the <laughs> yeah. Last yeah, that's this a... better or worse than that. I think I like that better. Yeah, I mean, there was more going on in that one. It was a little more, uh, I would say, innovative for the time, at least. 
This one, I liked a couple of things. I mean, I liked the idea of there being a, t- a test to get in. I like the idea of the, of the inquiry. Whether I mean, they, 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 they added, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, right underneath that is one one zero zero one zero zero one. Is that the Bender episode? Yeah. <laughs> the binary. Hmm. Uh, I think I like this one better. I mean, I guess they're both in about the same range. Data lore. Ooh. All Which right. is one that should have been good but wasn't. Yeah, it's definitely above Data lore. Yeah, I so. think so. Wow. I think so too. We really don't like Data lore. I'm trying to remember what I thought about Although, it. Data lore, there are still seven episodes below Data lore for the season. Wow. Yeah, that surprises me. That's right. I mean, this, I mean, I kept. Conflating with other lore episodes that are going to be happening later. Yes. And thinking I was going to get really, I was we excited for it. We love lore, yeah. just not that episode. Yeah, yeah. So I think we've agreed below justice above data lore, but which side of 11001001? <laughs> They're both in that same, like, there's a lot to like and a lot to not like yeah. for me. I'm leaning towards above. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Me too. Yeah. It's, it's Unanimous. Recency bias, and yeah. of course. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's, it's an accessible episode. You can kind of just pick it up and... Yeah, that's a good... <laughs> it is, and we're going to get things followed up on it. We get, like, yeah. some actual backstory. But, I mean, the... Oh, that, that definitely that definitely raises that for me now that you mentioned that. Yeah, and, I, I mean, the Wes and his father thing, I really liked that. Yeah. I wish we got a little more of Beverly's mindset on it, mm, but clearly she's already over it. I had the same thought, yeah. <laughs> I mean, she's... The whole, like, my personal feelings are none of your business. That was awesome, too. Um... Yeah, I mean, I always love Beverly. Yeah. And I kind of liked the beginning where she's like, instant crusher, and he's like, doctor. And I'm like, yeah, they're on duty. They have mm-hmm. to be a bit professional. Yeah. Next week, Heart of Glory! The Enterprise searches for answers as to why three Klingon warriors were the only survivors aboard a freighter just inside the neutral zone, which was seemingly attacked by a Ferengi ship. Hmm. Mm-hmm. We are going to meet several new Klingons. I believe this is a pretty heavy wharf episode, if I remember right. Until next time, live long. And prosper. And ace your exams. <laughs> or everything, fail. Everything is an exam. Just remember that. God. You either win or you just completely fail. <laughs> but the only person you're competing against is yourself. <laughs> and Oliana. No, I'm competing with Oliana. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Not with a four, Oliana? There you go. Or alongside. With... Alongside. There yeah. you go. It's All Been Done presents. Who's got the time?